believe. Of course, I'm so lucky to have had a father who encouraged me in that aspect of my life. He led me to understand that it's not in the falling, but it's in the getting up, which we have also reinforced with this afternoon's lecture. And of course, like I keep telling people, I have come to that realization that your comp the competition is between you yesterday and you today and you tomorrow, not the next person, not you know the people around you. But my own um, point of them, um, like when Mary was talking about this stolen child, um, we have to we you know deal with our children and let them know that it's, there's nothing wrong with failure because. Especially with my own eight-year-old, I wouldn't want her to assume that, oh, not at, at this at her level of life, that, oh, she doesn't have to do her best or that if she fails, mommy's not going to do anything or if she doesn't come, you know, doesn't make a good position in class. At the same time, I don't want her to be terrified of, of um, oh, if I fail, this is, my, maybe my, this is going to be the end of my life. Mm. So I just don't know. There's a, there's a, like... How would I put it? A delicate line for parents to really stretch and to because when I was growing up, I don't know the kind of father I had. He would encourage us to you know do the best that we could, but at the same time, it wasn't a matter of it wasn't a, a life or death affair if you didn't get the grades or if you didn't come best in class. But because of that singular behavior of it, I always tried to you know. Get the best grades, and I thank God it's not like I was the best student, so but I knew that at least I could hold my own among my peers. So that's what I just don't know. How do we put that knowledge out there so that our parents will understand that you just have to balance it delicately so that children don't kill themselves? Like this girl that committed suicide in um, that global bank that is just next to us there. I believe that it's because it was this extreme fear of failure. That made us decide that there was nothing worth living for at the age of 32. Yes. And it's really sad for many of our children these days, Generation X, that is what we we are seeing. So I don't know, I think it's still a call, a call for, like, it's an SOS for the society to think of how we can balance it. That's just my own little opinion this afternoon. Thank you, sir. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much. Um, the answer to that is very simple. Place carrots before your children. It's the same thing when you want to motivate a donkey to go further and faster. You tie a carrot to a stick, put it in front of the donkey, and tie it to his neck. So the donkey is always pushing to eat the carrot. It never gets to the carrot. So it just keeps on striving on. Okay? So it's the same thing we put for our children. Always Always present them with an exciting reward mm. for succeeding. Mm. You come to us of your class, you get this. You do this, you get this. What if I fail to get it? Then you don't get it. Mm. If you fail to come top of your class, you don't get it. So that's all. So what do they do? It's not a matter of taking the cane and going and cane, beating the life out of the living daylight out of them. No. Let that reward be the attraction. That there, there is something beyond just coming first in class. Uh -huh. It's not coming first that they're not looking at. They're looking at the reward that you have placed in front of them. Mm -hmm. That's what they strive for. Mm -hmm. So when they, when they don't measure up, of course, don't give it to them. Don't, don't, don't make them believe that you can reward failure. Okay? But if they've not failed so woefully, instead of coming first, it came second. Second is still a very good grade. So yes, I may not give you the what I promised you, but I'll give you something else. And still keep that one there until you achieve what I wanted to achieve. And each time he, he or she comes back home, she sees it. And oh, that present is still there. Oh, I can still get this. So that becomes the motivation. The motivation is not just to confess, the motivation is to get this prize. So you, there's a reward. So always reward good performance. Okay? And then. In times of failure, let that reward become the thing that they put their eyes on. Unlike us, when we're going to serious beating, you know, deprivation of food, punishment, 
it's totally unnecessary now mm. because abroad they don't do that and yet the children still excel so we can we can motivate our children by giving a reward for each time it can just be i want to i'll, give, I'll take you to a treat if and that, we should not always say that they must come first anyway it's just enough to say score 80 mm. percent and above that's okay for me somebody else can score 90 that's their business but as long as you are still performing excellently, I'm okay. So the person is trying to... If somebody scores 8, it scores 90. If all of them are doing well, it's okay. Everybody in class scored over 90. Like I was, as I was coming this morning, I was telling myself, I was going to write it, that in school, internal examination is um, putting the, is the child is on trial when you are doing internal exam. The child is on trial. But when you are doing external exam, it is the teacher and the parents that are on trial. It's not the child. Mm. It is the teacher and the parents that are on, are on exam. Because what the external examiner is, is testing is the quality of education they have received from where they are coming from. So you're going to find that certain, just like the last time when children from a deeper life school somewhere in the East were all coming tops in the jam. Mm. Uh -huh. So, external exam examination is actually a trial. It's the teachers and the parents that are on trial. What kind of education are you giving your children? It's only the internal exam in the school that all of us are under the same teacher that you're actually testing the student. Because the teacher should not take any student to the external exam who cannot pass it. You know that the child cannot pass that exam. Why are you taking the child out? So that's why normally you also have mock exam inside the school. So that mock exam is to determine which of them qualify, but we don't really use our mock exam to select people now. Mm. Mock exam is actually a selection process. And so, okay, you are qualified to go for that exam. You are qualified. You are not qualified because you will not be a good representation of our institution. You have failed the mock exam so woefully, we can't take you there. But nobody uses that anymore. Okay? So, the external exam is, a, is the teacher who is on trial. The internal exam, it is the student who is on trial. So, I, 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 I hope we are communicating. Um, our children can be motivated by what I will call carrots. I will keep the stick. Take the stick out. Because when you put the carrot, they bring out their own best naturally. It comes out from inside. They, and that's what's best for them. Because they learn to strive on their own. So that later when you take, when there's no more reward that they are looking at, they've, they've put themselves to a certain a level of performance that they expect of themselves. So they are still competing against them against themselves. And they say this is my level and that's my level. That is it. Okay? So that's what that's my recommendation. Ebony World. Transforming lives for life. Transforming lives for life. Yeah, I don't know if I've answered your question, ma'am. Uh, of course, sir. I Thank think you. that's quite concise. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you so much, sir. Yes.